Hi, it's Ronick from Ask Audio Mag. I'm here with Mark Vabos in the beautiful modular synth section of Music Messe Frankfurt. Hi, Mark. How you doing? Very well. How are you? Uh, it's really good to meet you. Uh, we've got you've got some tasty little machines here, tasty little uh, sections here that I'd like to kind of know a bit more about. Uh, could you explain to us kind of what they are and and then run us through like how they work? Um, okay. Well, basically, the Verbus Electronics brand uh, makes a series of Eurorack format modular synthesizer modules that. Um, you can mix and match, pick and choose, um, both from, from our brand, but also work together with all the other Eurorack brands that are out there, including, well, everyone in this booth, but uh, Dofer and Harvest Man and Make Noise, and whatever. Um, so um, we have now seven modules that we're shipping that are um, oscillators, filters, VCA, controller keyboard, envelope, and um, I'll just talk about some of the, the things that are special to our brand, uh, rather than you know everything in the world. Sure. So um, the really the flagship module uh, of our line is the harmonic oscillator, which is uh, an analog, all analog, done sort of in the style of the '70s electronics, um, discrete transistor-based triangle core oscillator that. Uh, multiplies the, the root frequency by two, three, four, five, all the way up to eight, and then gives those harmonics on separate outputs and with a voltage-controlled mixer to blend them together in various ways, so so that they can they can be mixed um, with these sliders or with these controls to to select um, different mixes of. Of um, harmonic content, and since um, in the course of any synthesizer sound over the length of the note, what you're really looking for is variation in the spectral content or the, the blend of different harmonics. It's important to have the ability to control whatever changes, for instance, in the mix in this case, or in, if you were taking a different type of wave and filtering it, then you'd want to change the cutoff frequency during the course of your note, or something to make the, the sound change over the length of the note. And in this case, it's a, a type of additive synthesis, so we're able to do it um, by changing the, the, the mix of those harmonics um, dynamically from external sources. And it's the only um, module of its type done with analog techniques and done in a uh, modular type of situation. Uh, how much uh, does it cost? Um, I don't know what the price is in Europe off, off the top of my head, but uh, US. in the US it's, it's um, $549 US dollars. Um, I, now that the US dollar is very powerful against other currencies, I feel like <laughs> they're going up really rapidly in the other areas. But, We'll, cool. we'll have to live with that. Uh, the, uh, the second one that I like to talk about is the touch play keyboard, which, uh, in the spirit of the synthesizers from the 70s, uh, West Coast, United States, Bukla, Surge, this type of stuff, um, it's uh, capacitance sensitive touch plates that are uh, measuring the, the surface area of, of a finger that's touching them to dynamically control whatever parameter you choose. It's a modular after all. Um, in this case, that pressure is going to um, to the width control on the harmonic oscillator to open up the higher harmonics with more pressure. Um, in a conventional keyboard where the keyboard is, or the key itself is moving, then you have velocity, which is how fast the key is moving. But in a key that doesn't move anywhere, um, the, the pressure sensitivity surface area of your finger that's touching it, in a lot of cases, is a similar measurement, but it's actually more like a, an aftertouch where you can hold a key and dynamically change the, the pressure as it's going. Um, so this keyboard has a, a set of keys arranged like a piano with octave select and, um, and pressure sensitive bending. And then there's a separate eight key tunable keyboard where, with its own set of outputs, where um, each key can be tuned in the style of the in the style of the keyboards from the 60s. Oh, cool. Um, 
That's awesome. And then these, uh, these interesting little gadgets here, so uh, what, what are these modules? Um, so this is the complex oscillator, which is a, a, a pair of oscillators configured as a modulator and a primary oscillator or a, a sound source that rather than addressing the, the content of the sound as um, wave shapes like you have triangles square and, and sign out as separate dedicated outputs, but out of the master output, the, the tone can be blended um, from from a sine wave all to a square or a saw or a lower um, order wave folded type sound, all with voltage control, and then. Um, stage analog sequencer with two rows with um, a, a built-in clock that's made out of a, a falling saw wave so that saw allows us to fade between the last step and the current step and create linear fade, linear slides that are tied to the, the speed of the clock so that it can be used either as a sequencer with switchable slides or an envelope generator with whatever number of stages, up to eight, and um, any of those stages acting as a sustain or uh, an enable. So it can be used as any type of envelope, up to eight stages, um, any shape of LFO, uh, sequencer up to eight stages, starting and ending anywhere, and um, also has a, an analog address mode where it can be um, selected rather than stepping forward like a sequencer, it can be selected from an analog input. So they connect as a rudimentary quantizer or voltage uh, segregator or whatever. Um, okay. And so uh, where, where can people find out more about, about your modules? Um, you can go to our website, um, verbiselectronics.com. Uh, we're distributed in Europe by uh, Alex Four, who sells to roughly 35 dealers around uh, around mainland Europe. Um, in America, Analog Haven. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much for giving us the run through, uh, you know, um, of your gear. Uh, looks really cool. I love the I love the keyboard especially. Thank you. Cool. Thanks.